Production Modeling Corporation was founded by a professor of simulation technology at U of M Dearborn in 1979 when his students included engineering professionals at Ford who were le learning the new digital engineering technology. Today, PMC still retains numerous PhD and master's degree holders to remain on the leading edge of new technology. PMC is still headquartered in Dearborn, Michigan, and has developed a nearshore, offshore delivery model to maintain the highest quality project management with lower cost of services. A primary goal of PMC is to establish long-term relationships with our customers through superior customer service and understanding of the customer's needs. All of 80% of PMC revenues are from repeat customers. Many consultants can provide single services. PMC is unique in its ability to address all digital engineering needs throughout the life cycle of an AEC project. Our engagements can consist of training or mentoring, outsource modeling and simulation, or software equipment selection based on your specific needs. PMC provides services and support for the entire spectrum of digital engineering, including scanning and modeling, lean initiatives, which are known as value engineering in the AEC sector, and simulation and visualization. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Chris Mounts um, for the uh, remainder of the presentation. Good morning, everyone. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, my name is Chris Mounts, Director of CAD and Scanning Services here at PMC. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about kind of a background in laser scanning and then uh, move right into some case, a case study on a recent project and talk a little bit about maybe what's coming down the pike in the future of scanning. Um, for those who aren't aware or kind of are totally new to scanning, I'm not sure how many we have on the line today, but it, basically laser scanning lets us collect exact geometry using uh, high-end equipment that measures points. Each time we set up our scanner, we capture around 11 million measurements. The end result is, is a 3D image that, although it looks like a picture, it's actually dimensionally accurate dots. So the goal of, of laser scanning at its core is to sort of replace traditional field measurement. Uh, it goes far beyond that and what it actually delivers. But at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're eliminating a, a traditional step in the process. So for any, anyone online who's, who's done this before, you know that when you go out to measure things in the field, there's a lot you're not going to capture. You're never going to measure exactly what's there. Uh, you're going to get close. Um, you're going to miss things. You can't measure each location of each you know, small piece of conduit or details of every molding. Laser scanning fixes a lot of that. It captures every bit of visual information, things that are visible. It's, it's not an x-ray machine, but anything that's visible will be captured and available for you in CAD. So kind of uh, briefly how the process works, uh, again, for folks not familiar with it, we start by planning it out. Then we travel to the field to scan, which involves setting up a, it's a small machine, a little bigger than a, a DSLR camera now. We set that up in multiple locations. Over on the right there, you see all the red dots. Those are the individual scan locations. Those have to be stitched together into what we call a point cloud. Once we have the point cloud or the result of multiple scans, that's when we start working on the scans, either in Navisworks, Revit, AutoCAD, almost any product will let us work with them. So briefly kind of how it's used. Uh, and we use it all through the different steps of the AEC lifecycle. Uh, for those new to it, though, the best entry points are either very early or at the as-built location. Even though some of the most value can come from construction phase scanning, 
we, we don't recommend that that's where you jump in and introduce scanning in the middle of a, a construction project. So with that, we're going to jump right into a case study that we've done, a recent project. So a little, little background, this is downtown Detroit, a uh, good size um, office building that's being completely renovated. Over almost 125 years old at this point. Uh, as you might imagine, there, there certainly isn't existing CAD data, let alone much in the way of 2D documents left from when this building was constructed. Also, a lot of settling. Things have changed over the years. Um, almost impossible to accurately measure a building like this by hand. So as we kind of go through here, you're going to see CAD data overlaid in a number of formats on top of the laser scan data. So in this image right here, what we're seeing is in the background, what looks like a, a kind of grainy photograph is actually the laser scan data of the building. And you see a series of windows. It, it becomes quickly apparent that the windows that were drawn in CAD simply do not align with what actually exists in the real world. Um, you know, this is, we see this over and over again on almost every project we do. And if part of your scope is to replace these windows, this can be a pretty serious problem because not only are they not in the right locations, they're also not the right size as to what's actually there. So we can display point clouds in, in a lot of different formats. And what we're seeing here, even though it looks like a heat map, it's actually a deviation map of the laser scan data from the floor. It may look like smooth colors, it's not. Each, each individual point is color coded based on its elevation relative to a nominal zero elevation. In this case, greens represent essentially zero, what we established as a zero elevation. And as you get into the reds, we're at up to positive five inches. As you get into the blues, we're at negative 10 inches, or negative five inches. And what we're seeing on, on this one floor of the building is an elevation deviation, a finished floor of 10 inches. That's pretty unique to this building. We seldom see that type of deviation until we get into the really old buildings. However, you know, very important because this whole floor needs to be restructured. This can help predict how much that's going to cost ahead of time. So another thing that scanning really facilitates for us is, is really unique views of the entire building. So what we're looking at here is actually a cross section taken right through the middle of the building that we scanned. And again, we're looking at the scan data combined with a little bit of CAD data. From here, we can determine how plumb the columns are, make sure we don't have any unacceptable lean to the building. We can also get correct uh, elevations from floor to floor, something that's pretty difficult to do with any kind of traditional measuring, short of uh, hiring a full-on surveyor to come out and shoot each floor. We also see the you know, really complex and, and damaged framing involved in the roof. So when I was talking earlier about this goes beyond just a super accurate field measurement. It also allows you to have basically a photo record of the site that's shareable online, which can be very powerful for teams when they're collaborating. It's not quite as powerful when we look at the static image, but each one of the, you'll see the kind of shadowed orbs in the image, each one of those is a scan location that you can navigate to. And it looks like a photograph, but again, it's dimensionally accurate data that we can measure. And like I was saying, this is available online to your entire team. It can be accessed even on a, on a reasonably powerful smartphone. So if we look at one of the things that's changed over the last several years is that scanning has become so efficient that it's actually faster than manually field checking in a traditional sense. This is important because we can't add cost to the project. Even if what we're delivering is a superior product, we can't increase the cost of data capture for the project. Scanning now is much more efficient, 
we can capture this building you know, a little over two days. We scanned it, a couple days to stitch it together. In a few days, actually, it says model, but that was to do a report uh, showing all the deviation. So that was the one project we did. We've also, obviously, we've done a number of projects. We do multiple projects a week here. And some of the other you know, kind of high-value uses we see for scanning that we're helping a lot of our customers with. One of the easiest ones and, and most beneficial can be doing demo drawings. We're not stuck creating CAD geometry just to create a drawing that's going to demo it out. And since we're really eliminating a lot of waste in the project, this can be especially helpful when you have no existing drawings for a facility. We can come in, scan, and then while the modeling of what will be left is being done, the demo drawings can proceed based on the scan information. Therefore, not holding up the process well and as built models created. We can really effectively combine uh, model geometry with the point cloud. This allows us to quickly move things around in the model, test out new design ideas much faster than we could by actually creating the whole facility in a model. So the image here you see very little that's modeled and the whole background is just a point cloud. Of course, one of the, the most effective uses of this technology that's been used for years now is in collision detection. This basically allows us to take a fabrication level model, which is what we'd want to use, combine that with a point cloud, and identify potential issues that will arise during construction. Now really, the goal here is to build things virtually before we build them in the field. Uh, like so much of, of BIM and, and VDC principles, what we're talking about here is, is analogous to PLM in the, uh, in the product world. We want to build things virtually before we attempt to build them in the real world and, and inevitably run into problems if we haven't planned. Another one of the, the most fundamental things we do with this is we simply convert it to a very accurate as-built model. Uh, accuracy is always, always negotiable, depends on the, on the particular project, what level of detail or design you need it developed to. Uh, one thing I, I like about this image is uh, this is one of the first projects PMC did in scanning. This image was converted from a laser scan and was published about 15 years ago now. Uh, this is definitely a mature technology. Uh, it works very well and uh, it's very effective. That, I thought we'd talk a little bit about, there's obviously a lot of other things we do with it too, but without covering all those today, I thought we'd jump into what we're seeing right now is, is kind of the future, what we're working towards. This is what our active development is right now. For that, one of the things we see is, is huge potential with uh, the rise of, of aerial drones, as I'm sure everyone's heard about. Um, although you can, it is possible to put laser scanners onto drones. We're not sold for our particular specialty that it's an effective technology. We are sold on the idea of using extremely high resolution cameras to capture basically inspection data for areas on buildings which are very difficult to access. Uh, whether that's huge roofs that are not maybe safe to walk on, uh, high buildings where you'd have to drop scaffolding down, a lot of different uses that allow us to very quickly capture data with a drone. We can then combine that data. We can actually turn the photographs into point clouds. But we can also combine that with traditional laser scanning to really develop a good, high-quality inspection of a building. Another thing that we're, we're actively working on uh, that's uh, pretty exciting but uh, a little further off probably is visualization. Um, whether it's uh, we, we see virtual reality coming first, 
and we're actually working on ways right now to allow you to basically interact, to go inside of our models and point clouds and navigate them effectively in 3D where you're not, everyone's not just looking at the same thing on a smart board or on a projector. Each person has their own view and can virtually walk the model. We see augmented reality probably another 10 years out, but virtual reality we see coming pretty quickly here, and uh, we're pretty excited for what it holds. Mm -hmm.